Hey, I'm Jerry, and I'm here with another short circuit. So I was buying some parts the other day, and I accidentally purchased the wrong chips. I was trying to get 555 timers, and I accidentally got the 74HC5555. Um, I really think I was looking for the CMOS version of the 555 and ended up with this. Um, for those of you that are familiar with the 74 series of parts, they started making some really bizarre parts um, towards the end in the, the higher numbers. For instance, they had modem chips and some other crazy stuff up here. And here's another very high numbered 74 series part. This particular one is a programmable delay timer with oscillator. Um, it might be useful for people doing hobby projects or, or even integrating into designs. It's, it seems like they're still manufacturing this. So the notable features of it is it can take um, RC oscillator input, a crystal input, or an external clock source, so it has some inverters and stuff here to generate um, your oscillator. And it has a 24-bit prescaler, which has a 4-bit input, which has some predefined scale values that's between 2 and then 2 raised to the power 24, so it's a 24-bit counter in here. And then it feeds into a monostable circuit which is um, used as a, a, a trigger um, at the overflow of this counter, depending on how you have your prescaler set. It also has a power on reset, which is kind of cool, so that it always powers up in a good known state. It has an external reset pin if you decide that you want to reset it for some reason. It has a one-shot mode, so once you trigger the counter, it will stop and can't be re-triggered again without a reset pulse being sent to it. It has two inputs for um, triggering. Both of them have Schmidt triggers, which means they um, have a hysteresis in them and can take a very slow rise time and kind of a noisy um, signal in, and it'll generate a nice pulse signal going into the monostable circuit. And uh, it has a, a rising and falling configuration, so you can use either or both. And then for the output, it has some pretty decent um, drives, some 20 milliamp drive. It has a complementary output, so um, you have an inverted output including the uh, regular output. Um, it also has a clock suspend, so when this is not um, triggered and the counter is not running, the clock can also be suspended, so that's a pin that you can toggle and um, put it into a, a very low power mode. And since it's CMOS, its quiescent current is going to be very low and uh, potentially could make some devices that uh, would have very long battery life. Okay, so here's the configuration that I've set up. So here's my RC constant, a 200K resistor. Uh, a 2 nanofarad cap to um, ground 100k resistor here and a 0.1 so that sets up about a 20 hertz um, RC time constant it, it depends on your supply voltage I'm using about 5 volts here um, oh so if you want a higher precision clock source you can use an external clock or a crystal All right, here's the configuration of the the test circuit that I built um, I was trying to figure out some applications to use this for, and a, a kind of a, a burglar alarm concept came to mind. So I have a photo transistor that's pulled up to VCC, and then when light strikes the photo transistor, it turns on, starts conducting, and will pull this node right here down towards zero. So I fed that into one of the Schmidt triggers, which when light strikes this, um, IR, this is an IR um, phototransistor that I use. It'll trigger the monostable circuit, which then will start the counter, which will start the oscillator. And I have a, a preset that's hardwired, so some of them are pulled up to VCC and one of them is pulled to ground, which I believe I have it set to 250 clock ticks, which is a fairly short um, amount of uh, time. And then I also have, just to indicate that something's happened, I have a, an LED hooked up through a 180 ohm resistor down through um, the output um, 
driver. You could replace this with a transistor or a relay or some kind of buzzer circuit. So let's take a look at the circuit. I have a, a remote control which was a pretty handy IR source. You can see this cheapy camera will see the IR source. So down here I have the LED. Here's the circuit prototyped. If I shine the IR into the photo transistor, out goes the LED for a certain amount of time, comes back on. So I could, um, by changing that prescaler, make this duration much longer. Um, I could put other devices on the front of this besides a uh, photo transistor, maybe a PIR, so a motion sensor. Another application I thought would be cool for this is these really cheap tap lights, they call them. I, they sell them at all the really um, the drug store. They're, they're, you're supposed to put them in your closet and then you turn them on and then it gives you some light in there and they're battery operated, but they never turn off on their own. So you always, the first time you go in there, you turn them on and they never turn off. So, and your battery goes dead. So this could be an application where you could have a long duration um, LED driven circuit that um, would go off automatically. Um, well, I think that's about it on this. Uh, check the part out, it's pretty cool. Um, look it up. There's some, here's the part number again. I think these would be pretty handy and, and fun to play with.